Pit Wrestling Club. 127 pounds though, Team USA. We have Braden Davis, who's in on the shot right away. He's from Dundee High School, Belleville, Michigan. He is taking on Vinny Kilkiri, who's in some trouble, trying to defend the shot. Kilkiri from Greater Latrobe, Greater Latrobe, Greensburg, Pennsylvania, has the closed wizard, does, does Kilkiri. Davis, 155 and six is career, four-time state champion. And that cut back, not legal, as Kilkiri was trying to kick the back of the leg out. Yeah, can't leave your feet and make contact with the back of your opponent leg. He did just kiss it a little bit with his foot, but still illegal. And as Kilkiri able to fight through the position and wrestle himself out. Explosive attack to the hands to peel him off the leg. Davis head to Penn State next year. This is gonna be a Big Ten rivalry as Vinnie Kilkiri is gonna be a Buckeye headed to Columbus. Kilkiri three-time PIAA state champion, 131 and 12 in his career. Finished first, third, and then ran off back-to-back -back state titles in his junior and senior seasons. So we're seeing two future Nittany Lions going back-to-back. -back. Dale Nasdio from Williamsport just dropped a tough one. Let's see if Braden Davis can get a win for the future Nittany Lions that are competing here this evening. Davis has the higher national ranking, but it was Kilkiri winning this belt for the Super 32 belt back at, at, at 106 pounds. I think that was in 2021. Yeah, Davis slightly higher in the national rankings, coming in at five, Kilkiri number seven. Kilkiri might have a future in college cheerleading. If you watch the Pennsylvania State Finals, did quite a pyramid lift with his coaches right in front of our announcer table. I was hoping for a backflip out of that pyramid, didn't get it, but. <laughs> I talked to Vinny about that. I said, who was the architect of that celebration? He says, Coach Mears. And, and he's like, then he looks at me, he says, five minutes before I went out there. He's like, I didn't have time to say no. <laughs> so and I'm, I'm gonna go back and correct myself. It was the 2020 Super 32. Championship final 106, won by Kilkerry. So scoreless first period. It's one of the feature bouts, at least one of the bouts I know I was looking forward to, but Kilkerry in a little bit of trouble. We'll see if Davis can hang on to that Peterson. Doesn't hang on to the Peterson, but able to come around. It gives him an escape, and we're high flying. We're hitting the map, but no points. We're just neutral. I thought the escape was given a little bit early to Davis. But didn't matter, as Davis eventually got the escape anyways. And there you see some of the excitement that Pennsylvania wrestling fans are used to seeing from the wrestler from Greater Latrobe. And Vinny Kilkir has been such a pleasure to cover over the years in Pennsylvania. I kind of tease him sometimes like, hey, you don't need to go for the home run all the time, but man, is he fun to watch. That was one that I thought he was gonna come out of on top. Yeah, not afraid to go big, likes to trip. Doesn't mind jacking up those underhooks as Davis has his head buried in the chest. And the, the corner for Davis, not happy about the position because a after Kilkerry bombed him on his head, all you heard was no underhook, no underhook, no underhook, and then they get right back into it. Kilkiri really forcing that position. Davis keeping his hands low. 45 seconds in the second period. Escape for Davis, but we're going upper body again. We'll see what happens. Kilkiri just looks like he wants to get some action going from up here. So we'll get a stalemate. 23 seconds to go in the period. Fifteen seconds in the second. Number five and number seven in the country. Battling out here at Peters Township High School, 49th annual Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. 
Again, brought to you by U.S. Steel. Also Cliff Keen Athletics, uniform providers. One of the annual sponsors here for the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. Great event that's not just one dual meet. Put on a great banquet the night before. As Davis tries to go for the tilt. Kilkiri catches ahead. Davis able to stay on the leg. And wrestle through a little bit of trouble. Kilkiri earns the escape to tie things up. Plenty of time here in the third period. And we got a stall call for backing out on Davis. What power on the hips there. Kilkiri dug his feet in the mat. Dug the left side under hook in, pulled Davis right up off of his legs. And Kill Curry, he almost runs to the underhooks. You know, like when, when he sees an opening, he's moving his feet hard. And that just shows you the comfort level he has with big moves. And oftentimes, even if he's not the one that initiates the throw, he can usually come out on top. So you see him kind of charging in. Now we circle out with one minute to go in the third period. Special thanks to the National Wrestlers Coaches Association also being out here ahead of that Mike Moyer. And that's an illegal cutback by Vinny Kilkiri. And he's going to get the takedown and two swipes. So he left his feet and made contact with the leg. Brought Davis back to his back. So we've got two and two. He's up five to one with 26 seconds to go. And you, you've got the Team USA bench. They, they want to talk about that being an illegal cutback. Funny enough, yesterday during the workout, you got to have Coach Capusta in the corner for him. He actually did that to kill Curie as they were drilling. And I mentioned to Linda Muth how it was illegal. You cannot make contact with it. I believe they're 100% correct. Team USA, not a legal hold. Yeah, the hometown fans didn't like Team USA coming to the score table. But as Brock mentioned, they had more than a gripe there as they are correct by rule. But Kilkiri is gonna take advantage of the situation. So it's Vinny Kilkiri from Greater Latrobe with the 5-2 win and he gets Team PA on the board. Rivers Boat Rental, Pittsburgh's most reliable boat service. Here at 133 pounds, we have Kale Hughes from Stillwater, representing Team USA, hometown of Glencoe, Oklahoma. And he is taking on Jaden Pepe from Wyoming area, hometown of West Pittston, Pennsylvania. Hughes 140 and zero in his career, four-time state champion, headed to Oklahoma State. Talked about that recruiting process. You, you think being there in Stillwater, it's a done deal. He said, no, that wasn't the case. I, you know, searched around, but, you know, after taking my visits, looking at other options, it was just staying home was the best option. Jaden Pepe, 157 and five his career, three-time PIAA state champion, headed to Harvard. Trying to come out the back door. Pepe hanging on as a crotch lock. Again, using college out of bounds rule. Pepe in a better position in the scramble. And Hughes does a nice job with the chest wrap and just pulls him right out of bounds to get the restart. 50 seconds to go in the first period. Maybe on paper, a lot of people might not think this is going to be close. Kale Hughes, number one ranked in the country. Pepe, only honorable mention, but as we mentioned, a three-time Pennsylvania State champion. Not a 
always talked about as some of the other three-timers in the state of PA, but definitely a tough wrestler, and we'll see what he can do tonight against Cale Hughes. And every year, Pennsylvania has one of those upsets that you, you really can't predict. You kind of like this one as a target. Yeah, Pepe's just tough. I mean, Hughes obviously, you know, the favorite <laughs> on paper, but I think Pepe can wrestle him tough, and we'll see what happens. You know, these guys coming in, traveling in from across the country. You know, it's a big weekend. A lot goes on. There's the bank with the night before. You know, staying at a hotel, all these different things factor in. I know Pepe's not exactly a hometown guy, but there's something different about jumping in your car and driving over to Pittsburgh. Yeah, than and as you say that, plane. guys coming in from Oklahoma yesterday ran into some weather problems in Dallas. They got in a little late. Uh, the workouts were actually wrapping up whenever Cale Hughes came in, made weight. The thing I always enjoy about this all-star meet in particular, these kids come to wrestle. Sometimes you get these showcase events and you don't always get maybe maximum effort out of the guys. But what I've noticed over the years that I've been able to cover this event, these guys like to go at it. They want to be the guys getting the big upset, getting the big win. Some bragging rights before they head off to college. He's able to get to one. Pepe keeping the other leg away for now. We go out of bounds. About a minute to go here in the second period. Thanks to UPMC Sports Medicine, we build better athletes. Sports medicine trainers and doctors, we appreciate them. Thank you to Dr. Sean Carnahan, physician and athletic trainer, Guy Sanchilo, helping out here today. Hughes on the leg, has the hands locked, 30 seconds in the period. He's been on Pepe's legs, but unable to get the takedown yet. Pepe falls off to the side, and there's a takedown for Hughes. Hughes going for back points, he's got the heel to the sky. And great elevation with the foot by Hughes, gets the hips to turn of Pepe, and now he's got some back points. And Pepe's on a place that he is not used to being, and that's on his back, fighting off. Short time in the second period, able to get off his back, but not before giving up three near fall. Makes it 6-0 in favor of Hughes. So any kind of Pennsylvania upset just got a whole lot harder with those three near fall at the end of the period. Pepe's gonna get set up underneath though in the third, trying to give himself a chance, get the escape, trail by five. And the clock not reset. Scoreboard operator, underappreciated job. The fans and are, are not easy on you, even if it's a showcase event like this. They want that clock to start. A lot of times in these events, the, the scoreboard that you see integrated is with the scoreboard. That's not the case here. The scoreboard operator operating the in-house uh, scoreboard here at Peters Township is separate from the graphics that you're seeing at home. Thanks to other, some of our other sponsors, PepsiCo, along with Gatorade, Saris Candies, providing delicious chocolate caricatures to each wrestler. They got those at the banquet last night, a big smile coming on a lot of faces. I'm sure they do not last long, but they probably ate their vegetables first. Right, kids? I can tell you there were green beans included, as well as mashed potatoes in the meal provided last night. Again, a great weekend here, not just a one dual meet, two dual meets. We have a great banquet the night before, some good keynote speakers. Thanks again to U.S. Steel for making this happen. Sam Hayeswinkle was the, was the 2012 Olympian Hall of Fame inductee and one of the keynote speakers last night. Got to talk to the student athletes. 
encourage them in their next steps in their wrestling career. Again, I mentioned already, but this is the 49th year, 50th next year. Classic committee is looking to bring back a lot of the former competitors at this event. And if they can only get half of the guys to come back, they're gonna be a, quite the gymnasium here at Peters Township next year. Every year, the NCAA championships are littered with representatives from the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. And there's your 6-0 win for Cale Hughes from Stillwater. Gets the win at 133 pounds and puts Team USA up 24 to three. Industry specializing in civil, mechanical, electrical, and controls. Also, thanks again to UPMC Health Plan, official plan of Pitt Athletics. At 139 pounds, we have a rider block from Wa Waverly Shell Rock High School, Waverly, Iowa. And he is defending right now against Tyler Kasak from Bethlehem Catholic, Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And it's Kasak on the shot, trying to work out the back and turn this into an opening takedown. Nice work by Block, passing the leg. Kasak elevating the foot, trying to get his feet back on the mat, and does, and Kasak picks up the takedown. And he's got a Turk, and we'll see if he can turn that into something. Kasak, Bethlehem Catholic, didn't wrestle this year. Uh, spent his time in Belfont, I believe, is where the family moved. And a lot of training at M2. I was really interested to see his finishing technique there and you know, just executed beautifully as Block went from plan A, a far ankle, to an ankle pass. Kasak able to pick up the takedown, progressed right through it. 79-3 in his career, one-time state champion, headed to Penn State. As you mentioned, forfeited his senior year of high school wrestling to train with the Nittany Line Wrestling Club trying to fell, follow the path of freshman wrestler Levi Haynes, who did the same thing last year. Block 151 and nine in his career, three-time Iowa State champion. He's gonna be a Hawkeye, so is there a rivalry bigger in college wrestling than Iowa-Penn State in the current day? I'll answer that for you, no. <laughs> Sorry. It was such an obvious question, Brock. I didn't think it needed it, it did sound rhetorical, Actually, probably. <laughs> I wasn't going to knock on Iowa, but if it's got to be a rivalry, they got to start winning more bouts. So Penn State ran away with the team title this year. Iowa did finish in second, but I can't say it was a close second as Iowa trying to retool and everybody around the country just trying to catch back up with Penn State. So a lot of people familiar Block had a win over Kasak. I believe it was at club duels a few years ago. People are familiar with that, but sitting down with... Uh, Ryder Block last night, he sat at the dinner table with us and we just chatted uh, back and forth. And he said, yeah, I did wrestle Tyler Kasak, believe at Tulsa Nationals. And he said, all I remember was I came off the mat crying because Kasak rode me for a long period of the bout. I don't think this match will end in tears with him either way tonight. I'm sure he's matured a little bit more here in the and last few years. But the, the other thing was, both of them had that question presented to him in the press conference and said it really doesn't matter what happened in the past. Both guys have progressed in different positions and we have a new bout ahead of us and the other guy presents different problems than they did in the past. And when you watch a guy like Levi, Levi Haynes jump levels like he did last year, spending the senior year in the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, came on this year, national finals, I believe was undefeated up until the finals. But then Benny Zerbin got him early in the year. Oh, okay. Um, but Kasak, you know, trying to follow that same thing, and a lot of people are interested to watch him tonight, see the improvements he've ma he's made this year before he comes on the scene next year for the Nittany Lions. Both of these guys, well, Kasak not technically ranked in the Flow Wrestling Rankings, but was a former number two block, currently the number two wrestler. Kasak going to work on top of the figure four. This isn't something new he's learned this year. This is something he's always been part of his repertoire when he wrestled at Bethlehem Catholic. Likes to ride hard and there's in those legs. Casey Cunningham, head pry. A, a lot of people see that thinking a legal headlock on the head, but if you're below the shoulder, about midline of the arm, you can lock your hands there and head pry. I'm gonna say about half the time it is illegal though when the wrestlers do it. So you do have to be below the shoulders. If you do, you're fine, but sometimes you'll watch guys and they're not actually below that shoulder joint and they're just locking their hands where it would be an illegal headlock there. But we've seen illegal moves uh, get guys a victory earlier tonight. So, Kasak, 
going to try any means necessary to get the win. It's tied 2-2 currently. It fires off a shot. Nice re-attack by Block. And good patience there by the official as Kasak trying to roll around. And we're going to run out of space with no takedown. So no points. Coach is going to come over here and talk to the official. I would guess roundly booed here shortly by the crowd. They're backing off a little bit from the coaching staff. So they're going to talk to the second official, see if there was ever a takedown anywhere. They're going to go no, neutral, no point score. So 2-2 two -two will remain 29 seconds to go in the second period. Good wrestling by Kasak. Able to scramble while also getting closer to the out of bounds in doing so and was able to find himself a restart. Interesting with Kasak's choice to forego his senior year. Didn't finish up with a state title, but he's got bigger things on his mind. Decided to not go for the Pennsylvania state title and try to sharpen his skills and get himself ready for his freshman year. Take a quick peek in the corner. That's David Taylor. Tell I really kind of look at it as two different situations. So Levi Haynes, they kind of thought he might be in the lineup right away. I don't think they expect Kasak to go right away. So he chose to, you know, for that development anyway, even knowing that he's probably going to redshirt headed into that room in State College. Yeah, and tough to choices for wrestlers to make, but man, when you look over and you got David Taylor sitting in your corner and you know that you're working with a guy like that consistently, um, it's gonna make you a better wrestler. And hats off to David Taylor, by the way. I mean, sometimes you see big time wrestlers become figureheads of clubs or, you know, they, they like to tweet out and they like to put the press out. But what I've noticed from David Taylor, at least from my perspective and what I see, is that he's hands-on. I mean, he's in the room, he's working with these guys. He's developing wrestlers. He's trying to be a coach, not just a, a guy to take pictures with and say, hey, this kid's on my M2 club. And you see him, cadet trials, you see him all over traveling with his guys. And he's not the only one. There's other senior level athletes that are doing the same thing, but just the time that he puts in the development of other wrestlers, it makes him better. And you know what, I'm just gonna say, I'm sure it keeps the sport fresh for him. One of the best things you can do to keep it fresh and, and, and make it fun is to help others and help other people achieve their goals. And that's what definitely David Taylor has developed, not only into a, a world and Olympic champion himself, but also making him, others trying to do the same thing. Kasak fighting off the shot. Hanging on to a 3-2 lead. I don't think Block's going to be able to do it on the edge. Kasak all over those ankles. So we get a stalemate. 27 seconds to go. Kasak with a one-point lead. And I'm Tim Rice along with Brock Kite, 49th annual Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic brought to you by U.S. Steel. This match is going to come down to a closing scramble as Ryder Block from Iowa he tries to take out Tyler Kasak from Pennsylvania. 13 seconds to go. Kasak dives in on a leg. He's in a real good position to ride this one out. There it is, Tyler Kasak from Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Gets the win three to two. And another win for Team Pennsylvania. Tools, heavy duty, lightweight, solid performance in any class. And there's some solid performance by Ty Waters. I know better than to look down when Ty Waters is on the mat. Luckily, I looked up halfway through that duck under, and that was smooth. Waters, 98 and 8 in his career, two-time PIAA state champion, headed to West Virginia. Gilcher, Detroit Catholic Central, 140 and 4, four-time Michigan state champion. And it's number three versus number four in the country, but for years, Ty Waters was severely underrated as it, you know, he dealt with injuries early. Yeah, we 
got a scramble here again. And this is exactly what Waters, where, where he wants to be. Loves the scramble, loves the scrap. He's got a reverse lock on the leg. Defending Gilcher. Gilcher able to step over the foot, but Waters has rubber knees like crazy. We go out of bounds and no score. Finishing my thought there about Waters. He defeated Mac Church at one point in his freshman season. He was in that 106 weight class. He didn't place. He finished 20 and 3 on the season, just 4 and 2, had an injury as a sophomore, then comes and wins back to back state titles. And, and really, you know, heading into his junior year, he wasn't ranked in the country, but you knew the talent was there. Yeah, a little sloppy slide by there for Waters. Almost gave up the easy two points, take, two points for the takedown to Gilcher, but able to come back with a whizzer. He's got to be a little bit more careful on those attempted throw bys. As he takes a 2-1 lead with 22 seconds here in the first. Waters, not your first West Allegheny wrestler, wrestler here at the Classic. Earlier tonight, we had the WPIAL All-Stars taking on Team Ohio. Ohio came away with the win, but teammate of Waters, Nico Toddy from West Allegheny, picked up the fall at 145 pounds. Just a great room there at West Allegheny. Taddy and Waters, also a junior in Sean Taylor, said to West Virginia. And as they were talking about the matchup here, uh, Gilcher, acknowledge the the different challenges that waters presents with his funky unique style and waters kind of countered with yeah he's kind of built like sean taylor so you know is a body style that waters is used to wrestling yeah waters tried to grab the leg and gilcher just ran him over waters caught off balance and gilcher able to make it into a two-point takedown I wanted to see that takedown held a little longer because I wanted to watch what Waters worked through as he sat on his butt. Uh, he ended up hitting a seated flying cement job in the state semifinal against Dagan Condomitti. And I think he had something up his sleeve there, but he just turned belly down once the takedown was awarded. He doesn't want to give up any near fall out of this situation. Waters fighting hands, see if he's gonna try a quick hip heist. Threatens a switch. Got good motion going, stays with it, able to get his escape point. So after that sequence, Waters was looking over to his coaches and they were kind of having a little bit of a conversation. His coach was telling him to take injury time. Not sure what happened in that sequence where he gave up the takedown. But his coaches were definitely encouraging him to take injury time. Waters is able to get the escape. Take this time to thanks. Thank you to UPMC Sports Medicine, the athletic trainers and the doctors here. Also thank you to our main sponsor, US Steel. Might see him in the camera angle over there, but also I want to thank you to Mr. Mark Billet for donating his time and skills here. Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. Again, Mark Billet, the photographer, donates his time and experience and expertise to this event. Thank him for giving us great photos. West Allegheny, 5-2-1 and one in the preliminary card belts. Ty Waters, your first feature belt wrestler. Much closer duel earlier today with the WPIL in Ohio. Again, Ohio did win that one. This one's got a little out of hand as USA is up 27-6. Waters, though, is leading 4-3. Gilcher gets set underneath. Also, thank you to 
White Automotive selling and serving cars the right way since 1927, do the right thing. Also brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built, the official soap and body whites of Flow Wrestling and the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. And there's an uncontrolled fall, it looked like. And We're looking right at Waters' back. Waters was looking to win Dixie out of the position. It is two seconds in high school to get a pin. Oftentimes in uncontrolled fall situations, the referee's gonna give even a little bit more time. We still got no control as Waters is hanging on. 4-4 four, four score. And Waters has gotta watch his back. And there's the takedown, two for Gilcher. Goes up six to four. 52 seconds though, still a lot of time on the clock for Waters. And Waters in the position, I thought he relaxed a little bit too early when he took the crotch lock through, gave up the bottom leg where Gilcher was able to step in. He came out of that, but it, it, it ended up putting him in a worse position. Gilcher able to finish out the takedown. Yeah, and I'm watching Waters walk gingerly back to the mat, so I think he might have dinged his self up a little bit on that sequence we had in the second period. I don't think he's wrestling at full strength right now. So he gets and stopped it, for potentially dangerous. Especially a guy like Waters, where that's his bread and butter. When a guy's in on the single leg, he's got a lot of different weapons from there. It, if he is dealing with an injury on that leg, it's gonna be something that really limits his offensive attacks. Yeah, and you see that limp there by Waters, and that's one of the things you worry about. Guys with real flexible knees, those limp knees all the time, you know, eventually it does catch up to you. Hopefully it doesn't for Waters at the collegiate level, but you know, he, he likes that funky defense. Unable to turn it into a win though it looks today. Trails by one, five seconds to go. We go out of bounds with four seconds remaining. And it looks like Dylan Kilcher is gonna get the win here in a battle of top five wrestlers. There it is, Dylan Gilcher from Detroit Central Catholic, wrestler from Michigan, gets another win for Team USA. Team USA goes up 30 to six after that 152 pound contest. And we'll move on to 160, our weight class sponsors. We'll move on to our feature matchup at 172 pounds for Team USA. We have Josh Barr from Davison High School, Davison, Michigan, and he is taking on Rocco Welsh from Waynesburg Central, Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. Barr, 132 and won his career, four time state champion, headed to Penn State. We saw Earlier in the night, Kill Kiri uh, headed to Ohio State. Ray Davis headed to Penn State. A nit, again, a Buckeye against a, a future Nittany Lion, Rocco Welsh, two time PIAA champion, 159 and 17. He's headed to Ohio State, number one versus number two in the country. Yeah, and we're going to actually see who is number one here tonight. Last match of their high school careers. So you can end on top and we'll get a whistle for something. Rubber match with Barr getting the Fargo final. Rocco Welsh getting the, who's number one about, that was 5-4 on a riding time point where he had 109 in riding time accumulated. So we have no riding time in play here at the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. So that would have been a 4-4 bout headed to sudden victory. And Barr fires off a shot, Welsh, on the re-attack, but Barr able to kick away. So a flurry of action there. Again, we're at 172 pounds. It's weight class brought to you by Regional Anesthesia Experts. Owned and operated by Brian Matisuk, providing high level orthopedic regional anesthesia at a surgery center near you. Also brought to you by Confluence Financial Partner. Planning starts with you, imagine that. Again, I'm Tim Rice along with Brock Height, 49th annual Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic here at Peters Township High School. They've been a great host again this year. I didn't know. Again, an event brought to you by U.S. Steel. Thanks again to Cliff Keen Athletics and all they do to help make this event happen. So we end the first period scoreless. See that? Both wrestlers 
able to touch the legs, but that's about all the further we got in the first period. Welsh wins the flip, and he is going to get set underneath and try to get on the board first. Waynesburg four and five in the main event after the Mac Church loss earlier this evening. Coleman Scott and OW for Team Pennsylvania back in 2004. Coleman Scott now leading University of North Carolina, had themselves a very nice national tournament and a national championship in Austin O'Connor. And a little gamesmanship there by Welsh, kind of holding the hands, trying to draw the stall call on Barr. Barr made eye contact with the official and kind of looked at him like, I'm not holding him, he's holding me. And uh, Welsh finally cuts away for the escape. So Nittany Lion fans getting a little sneak peek tonight of some of their future wrestlers. As Diao, Kasak, and Barr up here at 172 pounds. Coming off another national championship. So not a lot of whole, not a whole lot of action for either guy. Either one wanting to take a risk here in the second period with under 20 seconds to go. Nice to get a flurry of action like we saw in the first period, but doesn't look like it's going to happen here in the second. Neither wrestler wanting to make that mistake. Bar's choice in the third. One of the one of the times it is a no-brainer for Bar here to get underneath Welsh. Wants to get under and try to tie things up at one in the third period. Bar, the four-time state champ. Welsh, the two-time state champ from Pennsylvania. Again, future Ohio State Buckeye, future Penn State Nittany Lion. That's the escape for Barr. And we've got ourselves a tie match, one to one, 1.30 to go in the third period. Let's sit back and wait for some action here at 172 pounds. Just a tremendous day of wrestling. Another great event put on by the folks here at the Pennsylvania Wrestling Classic. It's been a treat, the 49th annual. Looking forward to number 50 next year. Tim Rice alongside Brock Height bringing you some awesome wrestling action. We got 50 seconds to go. And looking for some kind of scrambling here. Are almost on the leg, but Welsh able to get free. Both Buckeye recruits recognized at last night's banquet. Rocco Welsh recognizes the PIAA State Wrestler of the Year. Vinnie Kilkiri took home the Whippeo Wrestler of the Year. Going to be happy in Columbus to get those two. Uh, really immense talent head to Columbus over the last couple years. Yeah, and you saw some of that on display this year at the national tournament with Jesse Mendez, All-American, as a true freshman. Watching these guys come in and get work done right away. Buzakis is a guy that didn't get in the lineup this year for Ohio State, but he's ready to go. Along with Feldman, Nick Feldman. So we've got one minute on the clock in overtime. 
Six minutes, not enough time to decide it for these guys. They want to wrestle seven minutes, just like they will next year. College, you go 3-2-2. Here tonight, we're going to go 2-2-2-1 two, 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 at least. Could be headed for some extra overtime periods if we get through this one minute scoreless. Welsh on the attack, he's in good position to finish. Barr able to come up, now he's hanging on to the ankle. Welsh steps over and gets the takedown. Rocco Welsh from Waynesburg. The hometown boy gets the win. Rocco Welsh for Team Pennsylvania.